Welcome to this conversation on uh, the NFV ecosystem. Uh, today, we are talking to Satyendra Tripathi, uh, Trips, uh, at AT&T, where he is the director of new products. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the role that uh, AT&T has taken and NFV has been a, a very strong proponent uh, of the move to uh, NFV as the annual neutralization. So um, it's interesting to hear uh, from, uh, uh, from them directly uh, what the experience has been uh, uh, to date and what they look forward to, um, to do in the future. So why don't we get started, and Trips, why don't you give us uh, an introduction of uh, what is the approach of uh, at AT&T uh, on uh, uh, NFV? Sure. Uh, before, um, before I start, um, Monica, thanks for having me uh, for this uh, interview. Um, <clears throat> I work uh, on the C2 uh, uh, side of the house. Uh, my key responsibility now is to deliver uh, virtualizes, virtualized services and platforms um, for, uh, for AT&T based on the UDNC and UDNC principles. Okay, and uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what is the, the general framework of uh, uh, AT&T in terms of uh, NFV? Uh, why did you, you know, why, why did you get into this in the first place? Um, so the, uh, one of the reasons for us to uh, get into NFP, and we all realize that if I have to put services faster and sooner, uh, and you know, if I have to reap the benefits uh, of you know reusability and the scalability, uh, NFP is the is the way. So uh, AT&T is uh, one of the biggest strategy of AT&T has been now is to uh, ask our vendors to only give us software, okay? Uh, you provide us the software for the functions that we, we want and uh, offer the function that we really want to manage. And, uh, uh, you know, we take those functions and put it on uh, at and cloud. What that means is we're telling our vendors to decouple their uh, software from the proprietary hardware so that it can run on any common of the shelf uh, hardware that can be deployed in at and network. Now, once we have that, once they've decoupled it, we can uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, instantiate those functions uh, faster and, uh, you know, improve our uh, time to market uh, of service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, you published a while ago a very a seminal paper on this that had a, a lot of a bigger impact on the industry, and uh, you've been very uh, outspoken about the Domain 2.0 initiatives. And uh, it, this is a big change uh, for the uh, for the wireless industry. And can, can you tell us uh, uh, what what is that you've learned so far? What are the major learnings in the process? So um, let me tell you. Uh, the learnings have been, you know, significant. Uh, in our journey uh, of NFV and UDNC, we've learned uh, uh, a lot. Uh, we've seen challenges, we've embraced those, and we've learned a lot. Uh, what we're seeing um, is that the certain functions, uh, uh, you know, uh, will be virtualized first. We see some of them can be virtualized as of today, but there are certain functions uh, that, I will be virtualized later. So when I say that, uh, functions like uh, media functions, which have heavy throughput, heavy traffic processing, uh, will probably virtualize when the traffic, uh, when you know virtualization or when the technology gets a little bit more mature. So that's one of the learning that we've seen. Um, <clears throat> I also want to make a point here uh, that at and is actively leveraging open source. Uh, such uh, as OpenStack for, you know, orchestrating and uh, managing virtualized function. And we are, uh, we're so happy to see the amount uh, of uh, innovation happening in the open source uh, forum. So that is the other thing that we've learned, you know, a lot of innovation, uh, you know, and a lot of movement in the open source community. We also are so pleased uh, to uh, see the amount of support uh, that we're getting from our, our vendors on the NFV initiatives. Uh, vendors are embracing 
uh, you know, the migration of their functions to the cloud. And at and is also working with the vendors um, in, in the whole migration process. Uh, we are seeing the new learnings that you're asking me. We're seeing a lot of new software vendors, only software vendors uh, that want to be part of this uh, whole NFV ecosystem are coming uh, into the market and are innovating. Right. So, so for you, that means a better, more choice in terms of solutions available. More, you see more innovation. Is that? Yeah, I think it's for us, and I think for the whole NFV ecosystem, it's a good news. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now you mentioned uh, open source. Uh, open source uh, has been around for a while, but in the telecoms uh, uh, space, it's it's a relatively new thing. And uh, uh, for for some time, there was a little bit of. Uh, I can say suspicion from operators. Can we trust it? This is not what we're used to deal with. Um, so, how how do you feel about using you know open source software uh, in your network where you need to have you know to maintain the same level of high reliability? So, um, <clears throat> uh, open source. Um, I think it is you know going on using open source as as the way uh, of virtualizing our network, virtualizing our our service. So <clears throat> again, as I said, we uh, we started when we started to uh, use open source. One of the uh, thing that attracted us is the amount of innovation happening, and uh, the fact that you can uh, you know make changes and uh, you know use those changes to benefit uh, your network and your service is what prompted us to you know uh, go to open open source. Uh, so we see. Um, we, we, we see open source organization uh, that we are working with, you know, the willingness to meet uh, all the industry-wise, you know, critical needs. But they also recognize that, you know, there are uh, certain challenges in terms of the robustness of uh, open source to support real-time services. So when it comes to real-time uh, uh, services, real-time cloud requirements, uh, there needs to be uh, a lot done, and I think the open source community does recognize it. We all do recognize it, and we are contributing to the open source, you know, for, from that per, uh, from that perspective. And the open source community is embracing, uh, you know, taking in uh, the inputs that they uh, they're getting from the carriers to make the whole open source or open stack much much more. Um, uh, you know, palatable to uh, you know uh, to the telecom uh, carriers. So a lot of movement in the open source, and uh, we we're delighted to see uh, you know uh, how the open source community is responding. Yeah. So so what we have is uh, there is a standardization uh, efforts uh, uh, mostly by Etsy, and then uh, open source uh, the open source community, and I, I guess both of them are necessary to make sure you have. Uh, uh, the, the the kind of solutions the the, the platforms and the, the basic uh, sort of the plumbing of the system, if you wish. I, I yeah, I agree. I agree. So you need the Etsy, you need the uh, the Etsy drives certain standard uh, standardization on how you would want to build your um, virtualized infrastructure. Uh, but you know, open source gives you the flexibility, the ammunition. To build that infrastructure, so they both go in hand to hand, and they both are uh, uh, they both are very important when we build our UDNC. Yeah, and uh, as you mentioned, there is the need to uh, for different uh, the different um, uh, participants in the ecosystem to work together, and uh, I would argue much more than uh, before when you had. Uh, vertically integrated solution, now everything has to work together. And before you mentioned the vendors, uh, but equally important is your, the work you're doing with also with other carriers as well in trying to all sort of converge to uh, a solution. Can you tell us how you're working with other operators uh, in, uh, in, in achieving this? So, um, you know, we've been working with carriers uh, uh, before and uh, we are very open uh, with the uh, with the work that we are doing, uh, you know, uh, on the uh, UDNC. We are very open to partner uh, with uh, uh, with the carrier, uh, both on the on the network side and on the service side. Uh, uh, you know, when it comes to UDNC. So, from a participation perspective, uh, we're willing to uh, work with our carriers. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, now, in terms of pace, I mean, this is clearly a, a long-term process. It's not something that's going to happen over the next 12 months. Um, are you, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I hear that, uh, uh, well, it's not moving as fast as uh, we wish, and sometimes people say, oh, this is happening at a much faster rate than we could ever expect it. What do you think? It's um, a tough one. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's uh, uh, for us. I mean, you know, we we're, we're in that uh, boat, right? So for us, uh, we see the train really coming fast. So for us, it's happening faster uh, and faster. So when I say faster, you will see uh, we will start virtualizing our services um, uh, very soon. So all the new services that we want to put out there from day one, they will be virtualized. For those that need to be virtualized uh, or those uh, uh, that were, were not virtualized, uh, we're going to you know, migrate them to the new platform. Again, that's going to give us another opportunity to make things much simpler when we virtualize the existing platform. So we're not going to just take the existing platform and put it on a virtualized platform, but we will make sure that the migration is seamless and it's much better uh, than what it was uh, in in the previous uh, world in in the non virtualized world. Yeah. So in order to have this seamless transition, which y you need to have to avoid disruption, uh, how, how do you choose? Uh, so are you going to start with individual app uh, functions to virtualize, and then eventually move to a wider uh, virtualization of the system? And if so, what are the functions that will virtu be virtualized first? So I don't want to get into specifics of oh, you know, what functions we're going to virtualize or what services the services we're going to virtualize. Uh, but you know, uh, it's it's uh, you know uh, functions that are very commonly uh, known to the carriers are uh, are going to be you know um, virtualized. Okay, so um, both on the application side as well as on the uh, on the on the network side. So there's a network layer virtualization. There's a service layer virtualization and there's an application layer virtualization. So uh, we are basically, um, you know, going after each of these, uh, uh, you know, aspects uh, of the carrier and virtualizing the services as we speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these functions are being virtualized as we speak. In a couple of years, you will see a lot of these uh, functions virtualized. Yeah, yeah. The thing that uh, uh, you know, in, in in following the news from AT and T, it's really um, it's really interesting because I think it's it's a really crucial is, uh, aspect is the the cultural change that uh, uh, virtualization brings. It's not uh, from a technology point of view, it's a huge uh, uh, change, but the cultural side is also very important, and this is what you uh, talk about uh, the the skills pivot and. Uh, uh, it, it's it's basically not only you change the way you work with your partners, but also the way you work internally. Right. And uh, can you share with us what are the changes and uh, uh, how is it going? So um, uh, the changes are happening uh, uh, rapidly, but you know for better. Okay, and um, AT and T has been um, uh, investing a lot. Um, on um, on you know the user def uh, user defined network cloud, so it's it's got a lot of focus on the UDNC. Uh, having said that, you know what um, what we at at t are doing is we are training our staff in cloud technology, different aspects of cloud. Uh, we also uh, training our um, our folks, uh, you know, when it comes to agile development, uh, software competency. And also how to integrate, you know, large scale uh, software integration using a, a multi-vendor environment. Um, also to, you know, add to that, we are following the DevOps model to the to our heart. Uh, you know, uh, basically we have an agile based uh, Scrum teams to rapidly innovate, uh, deliver, and uh, you know, support uh, development using the iterative uh, development methodology that. Uh, Agile, you know, brings to the table. So there's a lot of investment happening in terms of, you know, training, uh, you know, uh, internal employees, as well as, you know, giving them more exposure, more hands-on exposure 
on building uh, applications and services. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that this is, I mean, it seems like you're doing a lot of uh, sort of uh, very concrete, uh, taking a lot of concrete steps to prepare, uh, you know, yourself. But again, it's, it's going to be, it's going to take a, a, a long time. Now, uh, in closing, can I, can I ask you what you see, um, the, you know, the, the major uh, things happening um, next uh, in, in the industry, not, not necessarily at and what, what is your outlook now? I mean, NFV right now, it's a, and virtualization, it's a, it's a really hot topic. Maybe there is a little bit of hype in there. Um, what do you, do you think the momentum will continue? I think the momentum is going to continue. And uh, uh, I know at and is taking uh, you know, the bull by the horn. Okay, so we are going to be the leaders in, in driving this, right? Uh, once we drive, uh, I think, um, you know, we drive the vendors, we drive uh, uh, what you call the the external influence uh, uh, to at and And that's going to drive the momentum in, in, in the uh, external space too, in, in, you know, the external market too. Uh, I think what I see next happening is the momentum really building, uh, uh, you know, um, faster and faster. Every... Uh, every quarter or so, it's not, I won't even say every year or so, every quarter or so, you will see the momentum really, uh, uh, you know, getting up to the uh, to the next level. So I'm very really excited, you know, with the way uh, we are moving and with the way the industry is also responding. So it's a, you know, it may uh, seem like a hype today, but it's it's reality for us, and we see a lot of benefit uh, going towards, uh, you know, uh, UDNC and virtualization. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It's it's a, it's a it's a really um, exciting and uh, you know it's it's you really see change and uh, in in a, in a very positive way. So, uh, Trips, I would very much like to thank you for sharing your insights with us. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. And uh, uh, this conversation was uh, is part of uh, a report on NFV and uh, its ecosystem that uh, is available on our website at www.sensibilityconsulting.com. Thank you all for attending and trips again. Thanks for talking to us. See ya. Bye.